I want to show you how to use MathCAD to uh, explore, evaluate the time domain response of a system where the system has been described in the Laplace domain. So in other words, you're going to need to take the inverse Laplace transform. So I have this system G1 of S. It's a second order system. It has a resonant frequency of square root of 1 and it has a damping ratio of zeta, which I'm interested in exploring how the system responds for different damping ratios, so I've added it here as a parameter an argument in my function call, okay? But it's optional. And I'm going to excite my system with R1, which in this case is 1 over S, which is the unit step. So I'm going to put a unit step in time into the system, and I'm going to watch the system respond. The system response will be Y1, which in the Laplace domain is the product of my system transfer function times the excitation R1, which is 1 over S. Now what I'd like to do is um, evaluate Y1. I want to evaluate it, uh, of course, in time. So I'm going to define this time domain function. I'm adding zeta again because I want to uh, have the ability to evaluate it for different uh, values of zeta. Now the way that you invoke the inverse Laplace is as follows. Go ahead and type in the Laplace function uh, that you're trying to take the inverse uh, transform on. And now you go to uh, the symbolic uh, keyword toolbar. There are two ways to access symbolic uh, functions. One is the menu. So you see here we have inverse Laplace, but actually we can't use it in this context. The way we want to use it, uh, we need to use the toolbar, which has the graduation hat, which is the way that all college students should uh, approach this anyway, right? Because uh, we're smart graduates. Now, uh, here's the inverse Laplace, so click on that, hit enter, and uh, the inverse Laplace is automatically evaluated for you. <clears throat> now we can plot this. Let me define some time here. Let's say time is equal to 0, 0 0.01. Uh, Let's go up to, I don't know, 5. We'll see if that's sufficient. Enter a plot, put in time y1, t, and then, um, let's see, for zeta, let's just say I have 1.1. Uh, uh, okay, well, let's run that a little further then. Let's go to 15. There we go. So here's the response, the step response. All right? Now, I could also have, uh, I mean, I could do something like this. Well, let's put in the unit step. So I could go r1, s, and I want to... Um, if you do control shift period, that puts in your, oh, oh, it's not going to let me do it there. Never mind. I should have checked before running this. Let's say R of T, okay? Well, R of T is not defined, so let me, let me add R of T here. R of T, oops, R, oops, I should say, yeah, I'll just call it R of T, is equal to R1 of S. And I need to, uh, in, so you can just type this out as well. Okay, so there we have uh, 1.1. There's the unit step. And if I want to see how this responds for different, um, cut this, for different values of zeta, I can do that very readily. Let me, imp, let me put in a different value of zeta. Now let's say that we have a value of zeta of 0.8. Ooh, we have a little overshoot. And I can put in yet another one. Y1 of T 0 0.3. Let's make this very oscillatory. Now, let's go over there. And there we go. So that's how easy it is to take the inverse Laplace of a uh, transfer function. Maybe I have time for one last quick thing. Just show you another capability of um, uh, the symbolic math. Let's say I have the transfer function s plus 4 times s, oops, times 1, uh, time, uh, s plus 4 times s plus 5 times s. And I want to do uh, partial fraction expansion. Here I can go and use the, uh, where is it? Partial fraction, there it was and it will evaluate it for me. Pretty nice.